Hey whiskey lovers, Luke here again with another whiskey comparison video. Today I am going to go back into um, a type of single malt scotch I did two videos ago and that's the peated um, scotch. Um, I like pretty much all the scotch I've tasted but um, I do have a little bit of a soft spot for peat so uh, I thought I'd get that out of the way and uh, then see where things take me. So. Um, I probably got a couple peated, peated uh, comparison videos in me, so um, this will be one and there will probably be a few more. But um, Today I'll be looking at the Ardbeg 10 year old, which I've, I've compared to Laphroaig already. And then I'm going to compare that to Lagavulin 16, which is, now this is six years older than the Ardbeg 10, but Lagavulin 16 is, well, uh, at the time I bought it, the youngest Lagavulin you could get, although I think they now have a Lagavulin 12-year-old, so I don't know. I, that one actually I think costs more than 16. Don't know why. I um, have yet to explore that one. So I thought I would start with the Ardbeg and then go to the Lagavulin. So uh, let me show you the bottle here. So here's the Ardbeg. go. So Ardbeg is is a uh, pretty hyped up scotch these days. They have their Ardbeg committee which pretty much anybody can be a member of and um, I don't even know how it works. I've not, I'm not a committee member or maybe I am because I bought Ardbeg. I don't know. So um, yeah this is like non-chill filtered. They follow all the um, what fans of single malt scotch want which is non-chill filtered, no coloration, um, and um, yeah, so this is their 10 year old um, standard offering. This is bottled at 46%. Um, and let's, uh, let's have a look. So as soon as you pour this, it, um, it looks pretty unassuming. It's very uh, not amber. So uh, let me get my color scale out here. It's basically at the far end of my color scale. One, two, three, amber minus four, basically. Um, so yeah, no, no coloration here. And yeah, fair enough. Uh, let's move on. I'll have a sniff. So, when I compared this to the Laphroaig, uh, in comparison to Laphroaig, it's a lot uh, more sour than Laphroaig. Um, but as I'm smelling it here by itself, I'm getting, I am getting that sourness, a citrusiness, but I'm also getting kind of a pepper. A light pepper. Perhaps a little, kind of like a creaminess, but just a, a teensy bit. And of course, uh, it goes without mentioning the smokiness of this, because it's a peated whiskey. But the, <laughs> there's a lot going on in the nose of this. Um, let me have a taste. So it starts with a peppery, smoky flavor. Then you get kind of a burst of smoke. And as it's it's kind of tapering off here, there's a, 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 a teensy bit of sweetness, but it's actually a little bit dry just feels dry in my mouth is what I mean not dry as in sweetness levels I'm gonna add a little water and see what, what that gets me now I've said this before in my videos but I have tended 
over time to add more and more water just because it helps me get past the, the alcohol burn and I can taste the, the, the flavors of the scotch a little better. And I found, same things going on here, what I found is that as you add water, the, the smokiness goes away in peated scotches and you can get to the, um, the lighter notes a little easier. So it's still got that sour citrus nose. Smoke has gone away a bit. Um, I actually have here, I've been attempting to um, taste and smell other things that are notes that you find in whiskey. And I've got a teensy glass of, of dry sherry here. I don't know what Ardbeg is matured in. But if it was matured in a sherry cask, I ought to be able to pick up some sherry, which is kind of a sweet raisiny smell. And I've actually got some raisins here. And these are the smell of a raisin is is a lot heavier than the sherry here, but there's kind of a similarity. Not really getting that in here. I'll have a taste. Then we can move on to the Lagavulin. Hmm. Yeah, so there's still a teensy bit of a pepper. Sourness. Sweetness is coming through a bit more. And still that dryness on the on the finish. I can't really name a fruit that I'm tasting. If I had to pick one, it would be a very subtle lemon. Um, nuttiness wise, hmm. It's relatively light on the nuttiness. Um, maybe something like a cashew. Not a whole, I, I can't name one specifically. I wouldn't even say cashew. I take that back. Um, interesting. Okay, let's move on to Lagavulin so we can get a comparison here. So here's the Lagavulin bottle. This is one of my favorite uh, whiskey bottles. It just looks, I don't know, old, rustic. Um, I like that it's kind of got a faded font on it. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Perhaps not. Um, they've got, um, there we go. The bottle has this Isla embossing and um, some interesting flavor text there on the bottom. Maybe hard to read in this video, but yeah. Um, nothing going on the back except the usual drink responsibly and government warning type thing. Uh, okay, so this is a uh, bottled at 43% compared to the Ardbeg, which is 46. Um, and I think, so I didn't mention this, this before, but the price-wise, the Ardbeg, I think you could get for at least where I'm at, like 40, 45, something like that. And then Lagavulin in 16 is like 50% more than that. So I'm talking like 60, 70 dollars. So price-wise, they're not really in the same camp, but since they're both the standard offering of the two distilleries, I thought it would be worth comparing. So, let's see here. Okay, color-wise, now I don't know, I'm assuming these are pro this is probably not colored, but whatever, I'll tell you the color and we can, we can go from there. Um, it's like an amber plus two. So you can compare here. This is here, the yard bag, and then this is the lager bullet. Fair enough. Nose? Hmm. A little bit more of a raisin smell in here. It seems uh, closer to what I uh, think of Lafroig. 
kind of a heavier handed uh, smokiness. There's a little bit of a barbecue sauce, uh, like a barbecue sauce smell, kind of a sweet smokiness, but with like ketchup, almost. Fruit-wise, it smells to me like most like an orange, citrusy, but 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 sweeter than a lemon, right? The medicinal. Um, nose that I get off of a Froig isn't here so much. You know, I'll probably do a comparison video of Lager Roll and 16 on the Froig so we can see for sure, but that's not for today. Okay, let's have a taste. Mm. So the flavor here is actually, while the nose of the Ardbeg is a bit brighter, I think, the flavor here comes on a little more citrusy. Smokiness is is uh, it's there, but it's a little it tastes a little bit more smoothed out, probably because this is sixteen years old versus the Ardbeg's ten. Yeah, the raisin, the raisininess I was getting on the nose is here in the in the taste as well. It's not very strong, but it's there. As the finish is coming in here, it's um, hmm, not as dry as the Ardbeg. It seems actually a bit shorter than the Ardbeg. I think it, uh, maybe a little bit more nuttiness coming, coming through there. I'm gonna add some water, let's see what we get. Okay. Yeah, so um, as I've added water here and the smokiness has gone away again. I mean, not all the way, but um, by quite a bit. And it smells more like a like a sherried highland um, malt or lowland malt. Maybe um, I don't have any Talisker. I had a bottle of Talisker four months ago, something like that. That kind of is making me think of Talisker here. You smell my sherry here. Yeah, sherry is, um, it's got a very nice nose on it. Really sweet and fruity. Not really, not really getting that. Although, uh, from what I've read, people have they so Lagavulin doesn't publish the cast that they've matured this in, but people are thinking that it's uh, bourbon and sherry casts. But um, yeah, I'm not getting a whole lot of that sherryness. Although, since it's reminding me of a scotch from a, a different region, that may be um, the reason that I'm getting that. It's got that sherry maturation. Okay, taste. So the yeah, so the smoke is coming on at the end now, but at the at the initial taste is more of a fruity, like a like a an orange that's been boiled in sugar, something like that. Hmm. really nice yeah this has got a really dynamic flavor in your mouth as it starts with something and then finishes with something completely different there's a big blast of peat at the end but at the beginning it's just kind of not smoke it's the flavors underneath the smoke and then it, the smoke hits you very interesting okay let's do a side by side and see if I can pick up any specific differences. Yeah, man, this is very sour, that Ardbeg. Not in a bad way. I really like it, but surprisingly sour. Yeah. I guess if I had to pick, it would be like sour grapes and raisins. Is like the how you would compare these. Mm. 
Interesting. Okay, I don't think there's a whole lot more to say there. Both very good peated uh, scotches, but um, quite a bit different um, in the nose and then even dynamically in the taste. They're, they're different. Let's do our bag. Ardbeg has kind of got a smokiness through and through with pepper kind of at the beginning and then not in the middle but then at the end. The Lagavulin is, is a, I'd say a little bit sweeter, not by a whole lot. And then it's got that blast of peat at the end and then it's its underlying flavors up front. Interesting. Okay, well, fair enough. I hope that's been helpful. Once again, I hope that's been helpful. Um, yeah, so next time, probably some more peated whiskeys. Hopefully we can get through my peated whiskeys and we can move on to some uh, some other ones from Highlands, Lowlands, I don't know, Campbelltown. We'll see. Uh, okay, thanks a lot for, for watching. Bye-bye.